Hi friends, so we start today another lesson, The Ailing Planet, The Green Movements Role by Nani Adeshi Palkiwala. And we have seen, we have already done uh, all the five poems, that is the Laverne and Top, Childhood, Father to Son, The Voice of the Rain, A Photograph, and Three Prose Lessons, One, The Portrait of a Lady, Second, we are not afraid to die if we can all stay together and the third one, landscape of the soul and this is, this was written in 1994 published in the Indian Express and uh, you can see that it's all about his concern his great concern so to say his uh, concern for not only the people but also the planet in which we live in. He was a top authority on constitutional law, great Indian jurist, he was an activist, civil rights activist, civil rights means rights of the citizen, civil rights means rights of the citizen and the expert in uh, taxation and government finance, was ambassador to US, he was really a great man and also you can see his concern for the poor. He did, he, he has done a lot of things for the bettering the life of the poor people in India. He had a concern for them. Now this essay, this article, so to say, it was published in the Indian Express. You can see the main points as you should be begin like that now. You get a blueprint of it. You will find here about 10 points, main points. First one is founding of the Green Party in 1972 in New Zealand. So he opens the, the article like this. The Green Movement has gripped the imagination of the entire human race. Not Indians, Americans, Japanese, not like that. But the entire human race, the Green Movement. What is this Green Movement? This is a movement for keeping our planet green. That is the thrust here on keeping our trees alive. That is green movement. Isn't it? If you look at it that way. So the entire human race, so completely and so rapidly. This is the opening sentence. From there you can see the focus. The focus is the planet is becoming most of the part of the planet is slowly becoming or giving way to desert. Green forests are being cut down for firewood. Mindless exploitation of the resources of this earth. It makes this earth or the earth now looks like a dying patient, a dying patient in declining health and this is the great concern of this top authority on constitutional law. He says, the first thing is that 1972, the founding of the Green Party, that is an awareness created in New Zealand, awareness created. Now the second point is shifting human perception from mechanistic to holistic view of the world. Shifting human perception. And what is this shift in human perception? Means looking at the looking at the earth, looking at the people who live here. Not only the people, the insects, the animals. See, the other, other, other day I was listening to a speech by a guru. He says, who told you that the ant is inferior to you? Who told you? <laughs> they have the equal rights. So perception shifting, then what you see is, earth is a living organism. And we are parts of it. Earth is a living organism. It has got its metabolic needs. It needs energy. And it needs a lot of support, like the forest, like rains, 
like animals, like insects, like human beings. We are the only people who exploit this earth, not of this paradise, so to say. The second point, not about the perception, human perception is changed, is we should, you, we should be only stewards or trustees. And it is our ethical obligation to preserve the planet in which we live. We are not the honest. We are only stewards or trustees. That's the second point. And we, this is our ethical obligation. It's a moral obligation for us to look after this earth. Or otherwise it will be like cutting the brand on which you are sitting. What will happen to that? And the third point under this shift in human perception is sustainable development. Simple English it means use, meet the present needs but keep for the future. You meet your needs but keep for the future. Don't destroy. Don't exploit. Don't be greedy. You need only 10 rupees. And you have got 20 rupees with you. You spend only 20, 10, and, uh, and keep the 20 for the next. Your son or daughter or next generation. That will be big word, that's why right. I stopped short of that. Okay. So the shift in human perception is very important. It is as a result of the green movement. That is the role of the green movement. So three points to remember in the shift. Earth is a living organism, we are only parts, we are only trustees or stewards, we have a moral and ethical obligation to look after the planet, just as we have an ethical obligation to look after our house where we live, and also sustainable development. That is, you have to use, but keep for the future. Understand? That's very important. That is a shift. This is a very important point. What is question can be asked? What do you mean by shift in human perception? But what are the changes you find in the human perception after founding of this Green Party? Now the third point is that is a very that is in fact you know he's pinpointing who is the worst world's most cruel or cruelest animal. Man. There is a zoo with no animals but a mirror. <laughs> you go and you will see yourself and it is written. You are the cruelest animal. Why? Why is it written like that? To create an awareness in you. Awareness in you that you are actually killing your own environment or the house in which you are destroying the house in which you live. The house in which we live is the self. Understand? And then fourth one is Earth's principal biological systems, fisheries, forests, grasslands, croplands. So what sustains you? What are the four major biological systems of this earth? Fisheries. Secondly, forests. Third, grasslands. Fourth, croplands. So these biological systems, if they perish, the entire human race, not only human race, but animals, trees, everything will perish. So it is our ethical obligation to see that. A moral obligation to nourish this rather than destroy this. Fisheries can be destroyed by overfishing. Forests can be destroyed by cutting wood, cutting trees for firewood. Mindless. That is the greed, greed. <laughs> then grasslands, we can destroy it. Then grasslands will become deserts and crop plants there will be no cultivation. Understand? So this is very important point. Fifth point is 
Human exploitation makes the earth a dying patient. Already I told you. These four aspects, biological system, if we exploit mindlessly, with all the greed, overfishing, cutting wood and so on, cutting, cutting trees for wood, etc., then what, will, what is going to happen? The world will become a dying patient in declining health. Sixth point, sustainable development. Already I told you what is sustainable development. Use now and keep for the future. Meet the present needs and keep for the future. That is a sustainable development. And seventh point is topmost priority to population and growth. That's very important. See, you have to protect the environment, protect the forest, protect the grassland, protect cropland, protect the fisheries. Along with that, you should also see that the population the number of people here inhabiting the population have a balance, should have a balance. Too many people, too many mouths, and then we have got resources are not that much, then many people die of will die of hunger. So we being a rational human beings, that's what Aristotle says. Aristotle says, you have to keep a balance. Suppose you have income, 50 paisa, and you have an expenditure of 1 rupee, what will happen? So that's the same thing here also. When you see the world population, world population, it should not exceed or, or it should be, there should be balance between productivity and uh, consumption. Cons that is only common sense. So we have, to, we have to see our focus also should be, we should always, also have this focus on population. That is another point. And then we have got transcending vision from people only to planet also. Transcending go beyond. Till now we thought, that is 51 years ago, 1969, this green movement started. And it, we are now 2020. So from today, if you look back, it was 51 years ago. 1994. Palkiwala wrote this, that is 25 years that the gap is there now, 25. Now, uh, 25 years ago, yes, in fact 26 years ago. So you have to see the transcending vision. Transcending vision means a broad vision, not a narrow vision. At a particular point in history, people had a narrow vision. They thought that we are the people, we are everything. All these things are for us. We are the masters. We are the powerful. We are the only intelligent people. We can do anything with the planet and all the other things. But the transcending vision becomes going beyond this. So in the transcending vision, what happens is that from people to planet, the transcending is from people to planet. That means not only we should look after the people, but also not only human race, but also the planet on which we live. It is as good as the branch on which we sit. We have to nourish the branch on which we sit. Initially, instead of this, when there was no transcending vision or the narrow vision, people thought that it was they were. Afterwards, after that, whatever may happen. Whatever may, whatever may happen to the tiger, the lion, the insect, the worms, the trees. No, 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 no. The transcending vision is it's a holistic vision. Holistic means considering everything in the consideration. So, we are, as we said, it is like a human organism, nature. The earth, 
we are only parts. And uh, so important that every aspect of this human organism is important just like that every aspect of life on earth including the planet human humans non-humans plants animals very important that is a holistic vision so that is transcending vision the world is not just a collection of dissociated parts but an integrated whole so that is again part of the transcending vision. Once upon a time we thought that we are all dissociated parts. Australia is Australia, America is America, China is China, Japan is Japan, Germany is Germany, or separate. Now we have come to know, no, 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 we are all one. Whether you are German, Chinese, Japanese, Americans, we are humans. Concern is for the human race. The survival of the human race, the health of the human race. Understand? So that is, we are not a collection of dissociated Our body is not a collection of dissociated limbs, but it is an integrated whole, put together. You need everything to function normally, not a parts. Or two or three parts you feel you cannot do that. Understand? That's another one. And usher in a new era of responsibility. So in that case, we will usher in, usher in will start a new period in the history of human race. What is that? We understand that there should be sustainable development. We understand that Earth is a living organism. We understand that we have four biological systems supporting us. We understand that there should be, there should be, what, what, do you, what do you want, there should be uh, inclusive development, that is transcending vision, that we, so we understand, we understand that we are not the owners of this, but we are only trustees, we are only, we are only stewards, we, we have been entrusted with this beautiful planet by the Creator and then you, after you go, don't destroy this and go. Instead what you should do is make this better and hand over to the next generation. If your eyes are sparkling, your children's eyes should also sparkle and their children's eyes also should sparkle. Understand? Not like the eyes of a eyes of a dead dead creature. The eyes of a dead creature, no. But it should spark. For that you need your environment, your planet, your biological systems, your views should change. It already changed. Now he ends this article by this quotation from three great men. See that? And he says that uh, the first one is the chairman of DuPont. He says, I am not only the chief of this company or this business empire, but I am the chief environmental officer. Shift in the focus. Not only just the chairman of DuPont, but I am the, who am I? I am the chief environment officer, the concern for environment. Prime Minister, you have heard of Margaret Thatcher of Britain. She said, we are only tenants. You are not being given a freehold to do anything, whatever you want to do. We are tenants only. Therefore, what should you do? And you have, it is given to you on lease. And, do, and it is your duty to repair this and hand over to the next generation. See, shift in the focus. Third, so what Mr. Mr. Lester. Uh, that is, uh, was the girl, Mr. Lester? I think, ah, yes, Mr. Lester Brown. So he says, according to him, he says, 
what you have to do is you have to you have not in inherited this from your father for fathers but you have borrowed it from your children that's the thing understand this is not you are not inherited but what happens is that you have borrowed it from your your children so you are indebted to them when you have borrowed money from somebody you are indebted to them. therefore he says you have to be very careful in dealing with this borrowed thing because the children will ask you to return it and when you return you have to make it you have to return it in a very good shape so it is our it is our moral responsibility understand this is our moral responsibility so he has quoted from three great people what is mr edgar s pulla of dupont second former prime minister of a very powerful prime minister so to say of margaret thatcher britain third mr lester brown and uh, when he says what mr lester brown has said it is you have borrowed it so it is not yours you have no right to use as you like but you have to return it to your children actually when you after reading this you know after when we read this section by section you will be inspired no doubt to change your views you will never again burn plastic on the side of on on the streets you will never again before cutting a tree you will think twice and definitely you will say oh if i am cutting one tree i must it is my moral responsibility to plant five if you if at least five not five at least one <laughs> to replace one minimum that's what i am saying so also your attitude towards population control will change when you see the forest see the fisheries when you see a uh, grassland some crop plants you will think oh these are all gifts given to us what we should use only part of it and part of it should be left for the future generation so that kind of thinking so your thinking should change that's the thing you should internalize these points and then put this in the practice i am sure that young people like you you are the torch bearers of the next generation or future of this planet therefore i we or we have great hope in you we are very optimistic that you will definitely follow these points raised by the great the top constitutional experts nani addition palkar by for the time being now we will take you one by one section by sec section in the next classes and uh, after that of course we will pass on to the next lesson i think by that time by that uh, i think that the uh, portion will be over and then we will go on to class 12 this is class 11 class 11 lectures from class 11 hope that my 11 class students are enjoying my classes and it's beneficial to you in that case you should definitely share it with other people okay so see you by have a nice day enjoy your life but before that let us be hopeful that our accent now we send a vaccine tax our brains to produce a vaccine and easy access to an effective vaccine is the sure access to our success bye have a nice day be optimistic